record there. We are also going to subscribe on iTunes, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcast. And Tyler is with us. Good morning, Tyler. How are you? Morning, guys. Nice to be back on. Sorry I missed out last weekend. We, uh, we just uh, so rarely get sunshine on the weekend around here that I had to take advantage of it there last weekend. So I uh, apologize for missing out, but uh, good to be back with you. Uh, Chris did not forgive you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Chris forgave you. Hello, Chris. I'm quite forgiving. Thank you very much. And hello, hello. Hello. Uh, I see you still have your lineup up from last week. Uh, well, I need to have something while the Canucks are out before the next season. So that will be up for a couple of months at this point. Yes, that's true. And Sean, hello. Hello, Kevin. I'm doing well. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Tyler, don't, don't worry. Devin didn't uh, didn't review too hard last week for uh, for skipping out, but uh, he's missing now. He's out to, out in Brooks doing selling strippers. Uh, what? That's that's what the that's, that's what we that, read. That's what yeah, we had. That's, that, that's that is. Okay, let, let's. <laughs> th- th- I'm going to read the exact message. This that's is the exact, information. I just <laughs> this, I, I, we are not kidding. This is exactly what he says. I am in smelly old Brooks this weekend selling strippers. It was super slow yesterday. So if it is again today, I could do a quick hit. That is, I am not, I'm, everyone here, that is exactly what is said in the message. I hope that was an autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> so, but just, just to clear things up, uh, Devin is down in uh, Kale McCarroll's old stomping grounds in the AJHL in Brooks, Alberta. Uh, he must be at a market uh, selling uh, vegetable peelers. And that's what he's doing this weekend. So, vegetable strippers, vegetable peelers. Yeah. Maybe it is strippers. <laughs> we don't know. Good God, we're, we're driving through the cliff here. Okay, let's turn. Words matter. <laughs> Clapped. Uh, we're going to start with the flames because we usually start with the connects, and sometimes we'd like to flip it up. And I know Heidi is listening. Hello, Heidi. I know you're, you're, Heidi is busy as well. And she wants, probably wants to hear some flames. But Jeff Ward, the interim tag was removed. But actually, let's go through the news of how this looked. And I'm going to give, give my theory. And you guys can agree or disagree with what my theory is. So Peter Laviolette was named the head coach of the Washington Capitals on Sunday. And that was a $3 million contract. And Jeff Ward was named the head coach of the Flames. And we talked about this last week, how it took, it was really weird that it took so long for the Flames to decide on Jeff Ward. So, and that's a $900,000 contract that Jeff Ward has signed to be the coach of the Flames. Uh, uh, we'll get into what Brad Treliven had to say in a little bit, but here is my theory. Um, I think the Flames were looking outside first. I do not believe that Jeff Ward was the number one option, but I do not believe that they were willing to pay $3 million for Peter Laviolette to be the coach of the Calgary Flames. Am I illogical in my thinking here, or is there some truth to what I'm saying? That sounds logic to me. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think you're diligence. right there, mm-hmm. it, I think they did like what, what Jeff Ward brought. Um, and he brought some stability after um, – everything that went down with Bill Peters. Um, he seems to have the room, but I think they, they knew that they had, they couldn't just bring him on because of how they left, how they exited the, uh, the playoffs and, and how they, uh, how they've uh, played over the past couple of years. They needed to be able, needed to go out and see what else was out there. Um, La Violette and Gallant were the two names that everyone was talking about. I'm um, not sure what happened with Gallant, but it, I, I think $3 million for Laviolette is within the market for him. And I just don't think that the Flames were willing to match maybe term or whatever with that. Uh, I believe the other thing that uh, may have may have swayed the Laviolette to go to Washington was the fact, I believe there was a, a clause in there that he gets paid no matter what in Washington. And I don't think that's something that the Flames uh, would have offered. Yeah, I mean, it, to just uh, just drop the interim tag and not have a process to see what other options are out there wouldn't wouldn't be uh, 
you know, a thorough process for the organization. It's due diligence to kick the tires at the very least on what the other options are. I mean, getting a guy like a Peter Laviolette who's uh, got a pretty, you know, extensive resume there, to get him to come to a Canadian market and coach, I think, you know, you gotta, it's got to be a pretty significant offer there, and, you know, especially if Peter's got some other options available to him. So, um, no, I, I, you know, Jeff Ward, I think, did a great job with the Flames, uh, considering the circumstances he, he entered the role you know, uh, give him another year and take the interim tag off and see what he can do. I think he's earned that opportunity. Chris, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, he seemed to do decently well in the, the portion of the season that he did uh, coach for, and I think that he's at least deserving of a, uh, you know, more uh, time to be able to show that he's actually, you know, an NHL bench boss and can handle that pressure and I think he's done well enough that he deserved the extension. Yeah. Uh, so this is what Trey Levin said on Monday. Uh, those are the th- uh, there's part of this game where there's a text on the whole side, but I think the ability to genuinely inspire people and push them beyond beyond places that they think that they can do, get to. I felt Jeff was the absolute was the absolute best person to carry us forward. Um, and of course, he had a 25-15 three record. And then knocked off the Jets in the qualifying round. Um, I guess then the next question would be from the Flames' perspective: uh, Does that mean Johnny Gaudreau is? Out? My theory would be if you're bringing back Jeff Ward, you are also establishing some sort of identity with this team. And Jeff Ward certainly has a lot of. I'm sorry to do this. 2011 Boston Bruins style in him. Like it feels that that's where the Calgary Flames are trying to build a little bit of a Boston Bruins style of org- of team. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, but that's the observation that I'm getting. Does that mean that you pretty much settled that Johnny Gaudreau is gone next year? I don't think it's settled. I think uh, this does open the door for uh, one or two major moves for sure. I don't. Like at, at this point, if you're not making, if you're not shaking up the coaching staff, you have to shake up the roster. Uh, and what what better way to shake that roster up than take a, and then make a move with one of your top, uh, your, your two guys that have been around the longest in Monahan or Goudreau. Um, I know Jeff Ward. I think likes um, Monahan more, so I think maybe there will be. I think Goudreau's the the more um, likelier option to move. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's if, if it's Monaghan instead of Goudreau. But um, yeah, I do think this the, there's going. I think this just opens the door even wider for a bigger shakeup with within the roster for the Flames, as opposed to hoping that a new coach could could change it up. I think there's no question they got to move some kind of a big piece to uh, get over this hump and, and take a step forward in the in the postseason and. Uh, you know, if it's not Goudreau, like Sean says, Monaghan, you'd have to think might be in play to get moved there or or one of the bigger pieces on defense. But um, I, I don't know. I, I see I see a, a shakeup in the forward group more likely than on the back end. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. The four, forwards definitely seem to be where they probably need to make the biggest change. Uh, and, yeah, Johnny seems to be the, the black sheep out of that group as far yeah. as ward-style coaching. Yeah, no, just because Johnny's getting whipped in the media by a certain columnist doesn't mean the organization's feeling the same way. But, uh, you know, they, they, what they have there is, is just not going to push them any further. I think most people can, can feel definitive about that. Like, you know, this, this, this is only going to take them so far. They've got to make changes. And they, uh, as Sean said, they're not changing the coach. So we look at the roster now. No. I've, I, would, but I want to clarify a little bit of what, what, what Chris went off of saying that the, it's the, it's the Fords that need the changing. I, I disagree. I think I like, I like the Ford group that the flames have, but they've got depth there. They've got the ability to move a good row or a Monaghan and not feel as bearing up there as if they were to move a, say a, like a, Erasmus Anderson or, or someone like that because outside of Giordano they don't there there isn't really someone that I, I feel I feel uh, if you legitimately look at it is there someone that you feel comfortable that will be able to step up into a top pair role next year 
So I do think that moving a forward for defenseman and a younger defenseman who can move the puck as well as play a little and can defend the rush better, I think is something that the Flames need to look at for sure. And then there were the rumors. Again, these are rumors, but the talk out of Minnesota is that they're wanting to move Matt Dumba. Uh, they signed Jonas Brodin to a seven-year, $42 million extension this week. So, you know, in flat cap and wanting to make splashes, Minnesota is in play. They absolutely need a center. And the idea of Matt Dumba coming to the Flames for Sean Monahan uh, had some Flames fans excited. There was also – we'll get to Brock Besser in a minute, and that uh, we'll talk about that from the Canucks' perspective in a moment. Uh, but you, what you could do, I could see, is if you tr are trading Monaghan, you move Lindholm to center, you've settled that issue. Uh, you've got Sam Bennett, who probably can play center. Uh, you've got Michael Backlund, who you can move from two to three if you're slotting. You don't necessarily need Monaghan. Or Gaudreau could be expendable because you can, in theory, move Monaghan to the wing if you wanted to. Uh so to me, it does open a door for a Monaghan and Gaudreau to, uh, to, to be moved. Now, for Gaudreau, this is, for me, I think it's almost going to would be a blessing in disguise for Gaudreau to get out of Calgary. Uh, I just think this last year and a half, uh, I don't think has worked for him. Um, I don't – I think that there's – on one end, the coaching, he hasn't played well. But on the other hand, I would also argue if I was from Goudreau's camp that they haven't used him in necessarily in effective Johnny Goudreau ways. Um, they haven't given him the space to, to move. They, I, and this is one of my critiques of why I'm not necessarily sold on the Jeff Ward hire is I don't know if he's tactically strong enough with a tr in this conference where you have – a Paul Maurice, and yes, okay, he outcoached, he beat Paul Maurice, but you've got a Craig Berube, you've got a number of different teams, Rick Bonus, who are able to match up and adjust their lines accordingly, or, a, or is that even a Travis Green do some line juggling? I don't know if Jeff Ward has that in him to do that, and I don't know if they put Johnny Gaudreau in necessarily the best situations for him to be successful, and I think another team would use him a lot better. Oh, I, I agree there, Kev. I do think that uh, how Jeff Ward coached in the playoffs left left a lot to be um, – left a lot out there. Uh, we lauded what Travis Green did uh, with the Canucks in the St. Louis series in particular uh, in how he was able to juggle things around and find uh, lines that worked and lines that were able to capitalize on um, – their their matchups versus St. Louis. So it's definitely going to be something he has to work on. Uh, this is his first time coaching and uh, as a head coach in the NHL. And um, we, we talk so much about how pl players need to develop and players need to learn and, and, and everything like that. But it's the exact same thing as co with, with coaches. They're not going, they're not going to be perfect first time out. They're not going to be perfect uh, right away, they're going to have to. They're going to take their lumps, and they're going to have to learn from them. Um, uh, I think that's why when we we uh, as Canucks fans were so elated with how Travis Green coached this these these playoffs is that he was able to make uh, adjustments and change and learn and and figure things out um, from series to series, game to game, and then going big picture from his first year to this year since taking over. Uh, and that's just something that the Flames, I think Flames fans need to uh, take into account here. Uh, I do, it, the the questions are there for Jeff Ward, for sure. Uh, I think he's a player's coach. I, I personally think he he he's does, he needs to rule a little more of an iron fist in terms of um, lines. Because uh, what was the what was the talk uh, during the regular season when he moved uh, Elias Lindholm to center? And the Flames played really well. Yes, the points for Lindholm weren't there, but overall he was playing better, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinions. Um, and then he ended up moving him back to the right wing with Johnny and Bonnie because they went to him and, and were wanting him to do that. And I just 
I think you need to, he needs, he needs to, I think he needs to learn from that and, and, and stick to his guns a little bit more in terms of what he thinks makes this team, makes this team better in terms of lines. Uh, I think Sean alluded to it earlier. I mean, uh, continuity, stability, I think that's an important factor here too in, in the Flames deciding to keep Jeff Ward for sure because uh, you had Bill Pierce for last season and then into the start of this season. And then prior to that, you had Glenn Gal- Galutzin, I think, for two years. And then Bob Hartley, that doesn't even seem like that long ago either. So it's been quite a long of uh, quite a lot of turnover in that position. So, um, you know, let's give the guy a chance. Yeah, Tyler makes a strong point there. They definitely probably can use some consistency behind the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From 2016 through till now, that the, this would be they had they were they hired Gullitson from, from in 2016 to replace Hartley, and then they uh, went with Bill Peters for a season and a half, and now they're at Jeff Ward. So it's not it, it's not uh, uh, Edmonton Oilers bad in terms of uh, head coach turnover, but uh, it's still something that you need to, you can't, if you're, if you're continuing to turn over head coaches every season to two seasons, that's, that's a big issue. So I think it's it, having some sort of a continuity here um, and hoping that you can make some moves to change things up within the, the, the roster, I think will, uh, it, it is the right move um, despite all the questions. And there's plenty of room for Ward to grow as a head coach as well. You, you know, people sort of overlook that. I think sometimes, you know, they're, they're, you, you watch your team grow as, as a group of players, but the coach grows with the team as well. And Travis Green's talked about that uh, at, a, at a couple of points in the recent playoff run for the Canucks. Yeah. Uh, the Oilers had, by the way, they've had McClellan, Hitchcock, and now Tippett. So it's actually almost pretty similar. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't think it's that different. Um, well, I feel like you have to go back a little bit farther because they've they've had, uh, they, you have to go back to like within like eight years they've had like I think eight coaches or something like that or seven coaches. Yeah, if you go back further, I think there was Todd Nelson, there was um, Ralph Kruger, there was Ralph Kruger, there was Dallas Eakins, uh, there was Pat Quinn in there somewhere, there was Tom, uh, Ray. Tom Ray. That's right. So I feel like I'm missing one in there as well. But now there's been an enormous amount of turnover. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's that's Chris's counting there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I the poll question I had today that we have a poll question is: Would you rather trade for? I, I'm, well, word it this way: trade for Matt Dumba or spend about seven million dollars, which probably you'll have to move uh, a piece to keep him around, Alex Petrangelo. Who would you rather have? As Petroangelo was told by the St. Louis Blues to explore unrestricted free agency. And Petroangelo is probably going to get eight plus, maybe nine plus. So you like Roman Josie got nine mil a uh, lot for the, uh, when he signed, I don't think he's going to get that because of the uncertainty of the market. But I do think that uh, he's going to get at least st- uh, up, uh, significantly above seven, uh, likely above eight. I think so. Um, at Dumba makes six. Uh, I, I honestly think you go with, I think you, you spend the money on Petrangelo. I, he's a significantly better defenseman. And if you can get him at, uh, say, one and a half to two million dollars more per season, do it. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I would personally go for Petrangelo over Dumba. But that being said, if you're trying to be frugal and whatnot, Dumba does make more sense. But, yeah, as far as if we're just talking about high-end capabilities of the players, I would go Petrangelo. Just on pedigree alone, I think you have to go with Petrangelo as well. Yeah. Okay, and that's so far what Twitter has agreed with you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, Petrangelo is leading. Although I think both are are good good acquisitions, and I think one is a captain, one could be a future captain for sure. 